Hey, it's Jim's Little Boat. I'm Jim, and it's a rare, unusual day for me, an old guy raising grandchildren. I don't have a lot to do, so I'm thinking maybe I'll go down to the boat and single hand for a while. The winds seem pretty gentle, and the tide's nice and high, so Yeah, well, let's get the not. boat put together. Bilge is nice and dry. I like that. Unfortunately, I left the uh, master switch on, but none of the components, so we're still getting... Th uh, 13.8 volts out of the battery. That's good. Lots of sun this week. Plenty of water today. So I want the keel all the way down so I can turn quickly inside the marina. Sometimes when it's low water, we have to come in with the keel up and that really is not too swell. Put out a bunch of extra fenders because we got a new neighbor over the weekend. This is a pretty wide boat. Single handing, the hardest single things are getting out and getting in all by yourself. It's such light wind today that I probably don't need it, but I'm going to go ahead and hook up the jib dowser anyway, just because I'm by myself and I don't want any grief later. This particular mass gate can be a little finicky about the slugs going in. So I push all the slugs up and then I put in a thumb screw at the end. I'll show you. Now it'll raise very easily, it doesn't get stuck there. And when I drop it, it'll go to there. If I remember, I'll take out the slug and it'll fall all the way to the boom. So your three most important pieces of single handing gear. Obviously, some way to steer when you don't have your hand on the tiller because you're gonna have to go forward. And in this case, I am using the Catalina Direct, uh, what do they call it, the tiller minder or some such thing, the tiller stay. That's the first thing you need. Second thing you need is a way to tie yourself into the boat. And I will be using this one once we get out of the marina and I will clip it on the lifelines as I go forward and tie it through my life jacket. And you need a life jacket. I prefer this one. I don't like the blow up kind, but uh, at least I've got it on and the lifeline will tie to it. I like to have the table down because there's gonna be times when I'm gonna to wanna to step up here and adjust something on the mast and I stand on the table, especially since I'm 5'7". It makes it a lot easier. Motor seems to be warming up nicely. I've got the boat hook handy. That will be the last line I untie. So let's go ahead and untie all these lines and see if I can get out of here without hitting anybody. So far, so good. That's what the man said when he was halfway down the 30-story fall. Coming up on your right. Thank you kindly. Yeah. Because I've got three left turns and one right turn to get into my slip, there's really no chance I could ever sail into my slip. Might be able to do it if the wind were dead out of the east, but Frankly, it's tight. I've never tried it, probably never will. I've done it with my dinghy, but I don't like to raise the main until I'm well out in the main channel in the big basin. And that's especially important if you're by yourself. You need lots of room to make a mistake and correct it and be all, all good again. Wind's out of the Northwest, so I'll have to tack a little bit. Uh, looks like maybe three or four long tacks to me up to Boston Harbor. And then I'll probably have to turn around and come home and do my afternoon chores. We'll see. Never did learn how to tie a bowl in the cool way. I'll go with this. It's fine. I'll snap this on when I'm ready to go up and put on the jib halyard, get up on the deck. For now, I don't need it. Kind of sailing, let's take the motor out of the water. Okie dokie, we're sailing. It's quiet, it's nice. I'm gonna try to hold a northerly course if I can. Good day to learn how to single hand. It's uh, three or four knots, I'd like five or six, but quite honestly, if you're not uh, really good at this and you don't have a lot of sea room, 
eight knots should probably be your max single-handed maybe 10 that allows some room for gusts you can deal with and if you're new try for three four five knots no more than that the first time you go out I don't know how fast are we going the winds are quite light let's look let's see how fast we're going winds barely blowing and we're making yeah, depend on the moment you look at it looks like one and a half two knots which that's fine for the moment you got to remember to close iNavix because it keeps talking to the satellites no matter what you do and sucking up your battery I do have a speedometer right now I'm gonna guess we're going about three two point three just got the tiniest hum going on the cable I'll move the GoPro up front so you can see how the hell mines itself this boat balances very nicely I've got the rudder craft rudder and I have to say it is a miracle this boat balances so nicely I'm not touching the helm I can walk forward I can dink around in the cab and I can come back costs a lot of money but it's worth it the only problem is that if you fall overboard here this boat's just going to sail off without you. It's not going to head up into the wind and uh, tack back and forth while you try to swim for it. Well, here's just a little progress report. The wind has shifted around. It's kind of coming out of the north. We're on a gentle close reach with maybe three, three and a half knots of wind tops. We're going about two knots, sometimes a little less. I'm trying to gain as much as I can to windward because of the layout of this bay. If I can get over on the northeast side, I'll definitely be able to make it all the way back in a single tack, and that's kind of fun. Kind of hoping for just a little bit more wind as the day goes on. You want this lifeline to be long enough so that if you fall out of the boat on either side, it will be long enough to let you drift to the back of the boat where you can get to the boarding ladder. And that boarding ladder is tied with a reef knot you can reach from the water. I'm, I've tried it, in fact, I've used it. When you're in the water, you reach up and just give it a tug and the ladder will come down and you get back in. All of this, of course, is assuming that you're conscious. And if you're not conscious, I don't know what to tell you. Because the wind is so light today, I'm using the cam cleat in the middle. I would not be using that if the wind were the least bit gusty or puffy because that will cause a knockdown every time. You won't be able to uncleat the jib and you'll go for a weird ride. So if the wind were blowing, I'd use these other two cleats and that's a little odd. I know that I have three cleats by each winch, but this one's for the guy sitting forward. This one's for me when I'm alone and this one's for when the wind is light. You may notice that I've left the fenders out on both sides and unless you've studied Abraham Maslow, this won't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm a self-actualized sailor. I don't need to bring my fenders in to feel okay about myself. Plus, it's a lot of work and I just have to put them out an hour. It's not blowing hard. They're not going to float away. Yo! 2.5 knots and a little tiny bit of keel cable hum. And a, got a sea lion up there. We got 56 feet of water. Life is good. Well, the wind has pretty much died completely. We're moving about zero. Might have a little current-induced forward motion at this point, but I think we'll just gently jibe and head on home. And yeah, nothing, except we're going to get away from the guy that just went by. If he were really good, he would have cut his throttle 100 yards before me and hit it when he was abreast, and I never would have felt this way at all. Now, here's a piece of equipment you don't really need, but sometimes it's quite handy, especially if you're single-handing, or if you've got a really crowded cockpit. It's mid-boom sheeting, and I can control, to some extent, the trim of the main from the cockpit right here without going all the way back to the stern. The problem is, once the boom's out there and you're broad-reaching or more, you can't reach it. But uh, it's a nice accessory. It's Expensive, certainly not necessary. Well, gosh, I'm glad I waited. We got a little bit of wind coming our way. Not a lot, but we're moving over two knots now. The solar charger is keeping up with things. The only thing I've got on right now is a depth sounder, my most important instrument, a speedometer, which doesn't really matter at all, and the radio. But even in this uh, bright, cloudy condition, it's generating enough power to keep us going. 
I made a big screw up a while back because that engine will charge the batteries, but I hooked it up with polarity wrong and it kind of burned out the diode. So when it goes in for its annual service, I'll probably have them change it. But quite honestly, I've been out here for several days in a row with cloudy weather and battery power has never been an issue. Well, gang, I've been out here about three hours and the winds teased me and tempted me, but it really hasn't delivered. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and furl the main. I'll leave the jib up and then we'll uh, start the iron spinnaker and head home. Yeah, I know. Purists want sail ties. Like I said, self-actualized. All right, we'll start the engine and uh, then I'll bring down the jib and just stow it on deck. I don't try to fold it when I'm on the boat, but uh, this little outing's over. All we got to do is get back in. So like I said, getting back in is the second hardest part. Getting out is the hardest. Uh, you will want to be sitting on the same side as the engine so you can do the controls. And slow is your friend. It shouldn't be too bad today. Not much wind, virtually no current and plenty of water so I can keep the centerboard down. All I have to do is go slow and pay attention and a little luck with me. And there, my friends, ends the tale. Unfortunately, I lost that last little bit of GoPro footage. We were able to snug the boat in there just like I knew what I was doing. I wanted to share this with you to let you know that uh, it can be a lot of fun. Set your cockpit up so it's easy to do everything. Get yourself a tiller minder of some sort and go out and start practicing on a day that's appropriate for a beginner. Thanks for watching.